Hello and welcome to Morningstar. I'm Emma Wall and I'm joined today by Jupiter's Ariel Bezalel to talk about the outlook for bonds. Hello, Ariel. Hi, Emma. So you have called the juncture that we are at right now the perfect storm for bonds. Why is that? I think for risk assets in general, we're at a really interesting moment. Um, since the global financial crisis, it's the first time where the major central banks of the world are you know, quite literally together now tightening policy. Now, risk assets have been on this fantastic all run, uh, driven by primarily the fantastic amounts of liquidity that's coming to markets. Now you've got the Federal Reserve determined to raise rates. You have the Bank of England stopping buying corporate bonds. You have the European Central Bank now uh, tapering back on their QE programme. The Bank of Japan are doing some sort of stealth tightening programme as well. And the People's Bank of China uh, are also more recently have also started to tighten policy as well. So, you know, it's quite a it's quite a an interesting juncture. And I think we may have quite a, a, a volatile second half of the year as that punch bowl is slowly being removed uh, from the markets. That means basically that rates are rising, but prices are falling. How do you find opportunities in an environment like that? So the picture I'm painting here in terms of what investors should be doing is start to think about increasing the quality of their portfolios ultimately, start to take some profits. And within bond markets, what are we doing? We are um, increasing the quality of our uh, credit portfolios by reducing our high yield exposure. And with our belief that we're set for a more volatile period, and also the economic data is becoming a bit more mixed. So whereas earlier this year, you know, it was all guns blazing across the major economies of the world. You know, you are beginning to see signs that things are slowing down in some of the major areas like the US and China. And so with that in mind, uh, we think it's time to actually start to, and, and this is somewhat non-consensus, actually start to scale back into government bonds. You know, we think that, you know, a disinflationary or deflationary shock is now more likely than a reflationary uh, shock. Moving up the quality scale will be music to many investors' ears who have been forced to take on more risk than perhaps they are comfortable with over the last decade because, you know, low risk assets simply weren't paying. Is this finally the beginning of the end and we're going to see that reversion into the old norm? I, I don't know whether it's the beginning of the end, but look, what I would say is that um, this is the problem with QE. And in my opinion, the, uh, the reckless policies of central bankers um, unfortunately, because of you know zero percent rates or negative rates in in the likes of Europe, um, it's led, in my opinion, to a massive misallocation of capital. People aren't calculating the risks well, and so people have been piling into assets like um, like bonds, especially into high yield or cocos, uh, into property, into equities, just to get that bit of yield, without really thinking through. Uh, the risks involved. And uh, uh, like, like I said, I think with this incredible run assets have had combined with valuation. So, for example, this is the, the third most expensive equity market in, in US history, according to some metrics. It's just time to scale back the risk. Ariel, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. This is Emma Wall for Morningstar. Thank you for watching.